at the end, happily gets together. This logic does not hold only for Hollywood films. In the late 40s, in Soviet Union, they produced arguably one of the most expensive films of all times, The Fall of Berlin, the chronicle of the Second World War, from the Soviet standpoint. And it's incredible how closely this film also follows the logic of the production of a couple. The story begins just before the German attack on Soviet Union, when a model worker who is in love with a local girl but is too shy to propose to her is called to Moscow to get a medal from Comrade Stalin. Yes, no, it was... There, Stalin notices his confusion, distress, and Stalin gives him some advice, which poetry to quote, and so on. This part, unfortunately, was lost, because in the background of this scene, there was Beria, a Soviet politician, who, after Stalin's death, became a non-person. Was shot as a traitor, but we know from the screenplay what was there. If Stalin gives you a love advice, it has to succeed, so the couple embraces. He carries her, probably, to make love. At that very moment, there is the triumphant, violent entrance of the obstacle. German place come dropping bombs. The girl is taken prisoner. The boy, of course, joins the Red Army and we follow him through all the great battles. The idea being that in a deeper logic of the film, what these battles were about was really to recreate the couple. The boy has to get his girl. This is what happens at the end, but in a very strange way, which reconfirms Stalin's role as the supreme divine matchmaker. The scene itself, Stalin immersing himself into a crowd of ordinary people, never happened. Stalin was totally paranoid about flying, about taking planes, but nonetheless, when he saw this scene, he cried. Of course, he himself, as we know, wrote the lines. When the couple encounters each other, the girl first sees Stalin, then she turns around and surprised sees her lover, for whom she was waiting all the time of the war. So it's only through the presence of Stalin that the couple gets reunited. Alyosha? Alyosha! Natasha! This is how ideology works. Not the explicit ideology of the film, which we hear at the end, Stalin saying, now all the free people will enjoy peace and so on and so on. But precisely ideology at its more fundamental. This apparently totally subordinated motive, unimportant in itself, the story of a couple, this is what is the key element which holds the entire film together, that small surplus element which attracts us, which maintains our attention. This is how ideology 